All right, hi everyone. How's it going tonight? I hope you're all doing well. Um, thank you for attending another NEARC community event. My name is Katie Grillo and I am the GIS Web Technology Specialist for the City of Cambridge. And I'm also your NEARC Board President. Um, so as I said, thank you for joining another community event. Uh, as you already know, you probably already know, uh, NEARC hosts two annual conferences every year. We have the one day spring event, which is coming up on Tuesday, May 18th. And then we also have our three day conference in the fall, which this year is scheduled for Sunday, October 17th to Wednesday, October 20th. And that is that is scheduled to be hosted in person uh, at the Omni New Haven Hotel in Yale in New Haven, Connecticut. So please make sure you have those two events marked on your calendar as our as our main New York events for the year. But uh, these, these community events are really designed to bring us together between those two major conferences. So we will continue to host some of our informal Mappy Hour events, but we're also starting to host more of these workshops. And the workshops are really designed to be more interactive. They'll include short presentations um, and then uh, some sort of discussion and or hands-on activities. So, Tonight, we are joined by David Craker, and David is the Data Dissemination and GIS Specialist uh, in the Data Dissemination and Training Branch at the U.S. Census Bureau. And David is going to be giving us a presentation designed to help us as GIS professionals gain a better understanding of what data is available, as well as how to access and work with that data. So tonight's event is going to be broken up into a few different sections. Uh, we are going to um, have this be, be a little informal. So if you have questions, please feel free to pop things into the chat um, as we go along. But we'll, we'll start things off with a presentation from David and then we're going to split off into some breakout rooms. And those breakout rooms will just be an opportunity for folks to talk in smaller groups. And then uh, the idea is you kind of come up with a question that you would like to, to answer using the census data. And um, I'll explain a little bit more about that before we go into those breakout rooms. But after that, then we'll all come back together in the main room here together and we'll do a little follow along portion with David. So David will look at some of the questions that people had and see how we can dig into the data to find the answers to some of those questions, um, or at least try to find the data that can be used to determine the answers to those questions. So um, let's see if people are able to, I'm just curious who was able to attend the event uh, last month? Maybe like a show of hands or uh, pop it in the chat or something like that. I do see a lot of familiar names in here, which is great. Um, so for, for those of you that did attend the event last month, I see Priya, a little thumbs up, thank you. Um, so for those of you that were able to attend the event last month, that was really kind of getting a conversation started. Uh, and and um, tonight we want to sort of continue and build on that. So it's really thinking about how we as GIS professionals can, can build a baseline understanding of social and racial inequalities and to help bring more awareness and engagement to our communities. So um, enough for me, I'm gonna kick it over to David so that he can um, show, us, show us all kinds of great stuff from the Census Bureau. Thanks. Okay, thank all right. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Can, you can see my screen, right? My PowerPoint. Uh, can you, no. Can you see the screen if this? I can't. Nope, okay. I'm not hold seeing on. it right now. All right, hold on. I think I have to reshare the screen. Is what it is. Okay. Can you yep, see it? Yep. There now? it is. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, if I can do this, make it. You can still see it, right? Full screen. Nice and big. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let me uh, just explain really quickly. I I've been at the Census Bureau uh, 24 years. I I started there in the geography department, which is sort of a quasi uh, diplomatic, you know, doing geography between local government planning departments and doing some GIS work. Um, and then a, a number of years ago, maybe six seven years ago, I transitioned over to this data dissemination 
specialists. I do go out and, and show people how to get our data. Um, but within that branch, um, they sort of call me the geographer or the GIS person. So, um, so just a really quick thing so that you know this, the Census Bureau actually is a contractor. We um, contract to other um, parts of the federal government and they come, they come to us. We have these people out there all the time uh, who go and knock on doors or go visit doctor's offices or town halls or whatever. And they gather data. That data, once we collect it and sort of, you know, uh, tabulate it some, to some extent, we then transmit it off to these other uh, federal agencies. And then they um, sort of turn it into the statistics that they need. So for, as you can see here right in the middle, the uh, CDC is uh, one of our um, clients. Um, if you were to look at the, the last row here, uh, you see that it says American Community Survey. It's a it's, that's actually the Census Bureau that does that. So that's one of our surveys as well. That's our biggest one. And that's what I will really be talking about today. Um, we've just come out of a 2020. Uh, we had a decennial census. And so all sorts of things are going on. That is something we do once every 10 years. Uh, it is the official count of the, the population, but we don't really ask many questions in that. If you recall doing that, there were only 10 questions. Uh, we do make sure that every housing unit is accounted for. Um, and, and then this is the one time when we do count uh, homeless people. And um, this is the first time we've been online and you could do it on your phone if, if you chose to go that route, I did. Um, and then all the other censuses and surveys that we do, they're all kind of based on this 10 year count. So that's what's really important about it. Um, and let me just skip through a slide there. So that brings us to the American Community Survey, which is a little bit different. This is something we administer every month. It is every month of every year. It did not stop even when there was a 10 year census. So we were still uh, going forward with this. It's very impartial. It's built on an address list and an algorithm that selects those addresses. We have no idea if somebody's living there, what the person is like. We just go there and we sort of get the interview. We do oversample because some people will, will never give us an interview, but in general, uh, most people do give us the interviews and, and we, get, we get like 99% of all of what we need. So um, we administer this to 1% of the population a year. Uh, people can reply online or on a paper form, just like the 10 year census. But if they don't, then they get a visit the next month from one of our workers. Uh, we do ask 72 questions. Um, th that's deep characteristics we're asking. Uh, we're not interested too much in people's names. Uh, we do ask that. It is on the form to sort of get an idea if we have to call them back and, and clarify something. But and the reality is once this data is collected, we destroy those names and, and we're, not, we're not interested in their names. So uh, we have all sorts of tables, B for base tables, C for collapsed, S for subject, DP data profile. And I will probably show you that today. Um, and then we do all sorts of cross tabulations. So even though we're asking, you know, this, this question over here and this question over here and maybe a third one we sort of cross tabulate them and we come out with a third thing you may never have thought about and we put that into a table and so that takes place as well um, data can really only be retrieved down to a tracked level uh, tracked level is is sort of our showcase geography it's uh, it was invented you know to release uh, demographic statistics we, uh, some people are uh, retrieving data down to a block group level. It is not my recommendation to do that. Usually the margins of error are so high, it, it's rendering that data uh, not so useful or not so reliable. So that's something to keep in mind. However, some people go ahead and use that block group data as well. Um, this, these are the types of information sort of in general that you can get. I have three tables up here, DP02 right middle, 03 to the left, 04 to the right. We have a DP05, which is more about um, the count, like number of people, how old they are, what sex they are, what race they are, very, very similar to the 10 year census. Um, there is no DP01. Okay, so we are, go figure. I don't know why, but there is no DP01. But anyway, all these little, these topics up here are sort of the entrance way 
to more information in, in that area. So for example, you see disability here right in the center. When you look in the data profile table, which is kind of like the Walmart of tables, it has a lot of information about different things, but it doesn't get really too granular about any one thing. And you will see, for example, it says disability and it will have a few entries under it, a few lines, and that's like the, the most popular things that you could find. But if you took that word, the keyword there, disability, and went looking for it uh, elsewhere in our portal, you will find all sorts of subtables that are broken out with all sorts of information in them. So that is something to keep in mind that these headings right here are sort of the key to finding uh, more information about topics if you, you want to do that. I do. I go to a lot of um, sociology classes, and they're always interested to see what the form looks like. Um, and, and so this is it. And I do like to point out this is a, a very hot, hot, uh, contentious item, I think. But um, we do not count Hispanic as a race that is separated out. You know, so we ask the word, "Are you Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish in origin?" You get some boxes you can check off or you can write in whatever you want to write in. So we have um, software that can read, um, hand printing, I'll call it. But then down here, we, we go into what race are they? So for example, you could have somebody who is Cuban and Chinese at the same time uh, in, in their mind. So this is, we sort of leave it up to uh, the individual to answer this as best they can or as best they want to. Um, this is just to show you, this is question number 14, which actually has an A, B, and C, meaning that there are actually more than 72 questions. Some of them have, you know, double barreled and triple barreled uh, follow up to the question. So, all right, so let's think about data. Um, we have data thresholds that you, you need to be aware of when you're looking for things. And so the first thing to know is that five year data means that we, are collecting or, or pulling in a sample from information from five years and after the fifth year we release that data to the public and we do this every year in December so there's no five-year gap in there you there's data every year you just need to be aware that is it is the average from the past five years now some people who are statisticians and they like pure statistics they're not comfortable um, you know, comparing five-year data um, releases because they say there's an overlap in the in the sample, and so sometimes what they will do to find a compromise and may compare every other year and and do it that way. So that is an option you can you can go with. So December, right? And then we have one-year data for any areas over sixty-five thousand people, and that one-year data is uh, released in September. So it actually comes out a little bit earlier. So if you were looking, for example, for information for the city of Boston, you could um, look for that one year data, uh, probably around mid September of every year. And usually the data is uh, it's about a year late when it comes out. So here we are 2021. So probably by getting into September and in December, it's going to be the 2020 data that comes out. So we're, we're always a little bit behind. Um, all right, over here on the left, these are sort of the geographies of things you can find. So in general, if you're looking for zip code tabulation areas, you're going to look for five-year data, okay? Five-year data is anything less than 65,000 people going down to 4,000 people. Um, below 4,000 people, you can still find five-year data, but your margins of error may increase, okay? And by the way, we, we do have large margins of error because some people don't answer every question in that form. And so that sort of changes the, the, the way things are done. Um, over here on the left, once again, zip code tabulation areas, places which in um, New England tend to be cities and villages and sometimes boroughs. And then minor civil divisions, which are actually um, what I call a township, um, but I think in New England, it's called a town. So you might need to look for that um, in that layer if, if that's what you're going for. Counties, if they're rural, they're going to be in this five-year data and census tract will always be in the five-year data. Um, above 65,000 people, once again, you get this one-year data, large cities, large counties, congressional districts, and this thing called a PUMA, public use microdata area. You can, those are sort of like large swatches of 
of counties and tracks mixed together. Um, people in New York City like pumas, and, and so that is useful to them. So that, that is there as well. Um, little geography lesson here. Uh, looking over on the right here, you see it says block centroid or a block looks like this. Um, and then the block fit, fits within a block group and the block group fits within a tract, a tract within a county, county within the state, state within the United States. And so the other things like zip code tabulation areas and places and minor civil divisions and congressional districts and school districts do not fit nice and tidy within this scheme. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. However, for we in the Northeast, uh, when census tracts first came out, which are, you know, went nationwide around 1940, um, they were sort of grandfathered in. And so if you're looking for um, uh, towns or, or cities in, in, in New England, they will never really, um, they always coincide with uh, town boundaries. Okay, meaning if you have a, a town that has 16,000 people in it, it'll probably have four census tracts in it and they won't cross over the town line. Okay, however, in some areas like Vermont, it's really underpopulated. You may get uh, three um, towns that make up one census tract, but the census tract will always be coincident with the municipal boundary. So that is just something to think about. And then the other thing over here on the left, I have this thing marked here, county subdivision. When we're looking for data in New York, New England, and New Jersey, county subdivision is a way for you to get wall-to-wall -wall cities and towns, if that's what you're looking for. So that is sort of like a little code word that you can use when we're looking for data um, and, and finding what you need. I think this is a hierarchy that we use. I don't know that that's particularly useful. It's just really showing you what nests within what. Um, so I think I will skip over this. I don't, I don't think we need this, but this is something if you are into using GIS and um, you're downloading our data, you are certainly going to have to use the census codes or we, we at the Census Bureau call them the FIPS codes, but um, you will need to do that. And so I'd like to kind of explain how these work. The first two digits of importance, I'll say, are the state um, numbers. And so every state has a two digit um, uh, beginning to it. So this is uh, New Jersey, but keeping in mind that we insert in our list, things like the District of Columbia and Guam and Puerto Rico and a few other places. And so you will find um, that you may think that you're the 34th state or whatever, but you're, that's not your number. Okay, it sort of gets moved around a little bit. So keep that in mind. Uh, county codes come next. So if you're looking at something, you're going to get a three digit county code. Okay, and county codes are only odd numbered. They are not even numbered. I don't know why, but I guess we thought at some time maybe new counties would come along and we have a, a space a place uh, place for them if we only had odds but um we then have a tract and so that is uh six digits long if that's what you're looking for census tract this is census tract number one by the way so the first four digits are actually the tract and then the next two digits are the suffix um sometimes we subdivide tracts and and so that goes in there. We then have a block code and blocks are all four digits long and they are renumbered every 10 years after a 10 year census. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that some tract numbers, uh, some tracts change a little bit, not a lot, but they do change a little bit, especially with their geography and their, their uh, I'll call it spatiality where they are. But it doesn't, it doesn't happen too much, but it does happen a little bit. Um, in the Northeast. So the rest of the country, it happens a lot. <laughs> so um, block group numbers right here. It's the first part of the block number. Um, if you are looking for that, just keep that in mind. That's how you know what the block group is, okay? If you were looking at your a minor civil division or your town or township code, this is the way you would look at it. You'd get your state code first, then your county, and then it, it nests within the county. 
if, for example, you are looking for a place, it is a five digit code and it nests only within the state, okay, not within a county. And the reasoning behind that, I don't think this happens in New England, but in other states, even for example, New York state, we do have places that are in multiple counties. And so because of that, these nest within the state, okay? This is just to show you that all tables get a number and this is a, a base, um, a base table, so B means base. Um, the next two digits sort of give the, the subject area. Then the next three digits sort of within that subject area, what's going on. And then you will then have a suffix, okay? And the suffix uh, would be a letter. And if it's if you have that, it means it, that table is dealing with a race, okay? And I think we have letters uh, A through, I think it's H. And we have different racial categories if you, if you wanted to look at that. So I, I will very quickly go into um, data.census.gov before we have the breakout rooms, right? And, and just show you really quickly. Um, but I always like to say the key to this is starting here with advanced search, okay? We have the option of going the easy way I'm looking for, but then the, the portal um, if you go the easy route, it makes the decision for you in some respects. If you go advanced route, you uh, will pull up something like this filters, and then you can start filtering, um, you know, the way you want to go. And, and you can, it actually helps you explore a little bit if you need to explore. So um, I, I'm going to show you that. Um, let me just go ahead. This is my, my last slide. If you want to take a picture of this, I'll, I'll leave it here just for one second. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out of this slide show, uh, out of this deck, and um, I'm going to show you really quick where, if you're unfamiliar with our website, where you can find our shape files and uh, our geographic files. And then I'll go into data.census.gov very quickly and just give you a taste of it. And then you'll go into the breakout rooms and discuss you know, some of the things that you are thinking about. And then we'll, we will come back and, and analyze it and see if maybe you give me a problem that I can handle. Maybe I can find the answer for you. So uh, let me just. Um, yeah, stop. and just really quick, as yeah. David is uh, as David is jumping into um, into the website, all of you, please start to think about what sort of question you might want to try to answer with the census data. Just so just start to think about that. And then when we go in the breakout rooms, that's what you'll be focusing on. So this is our, our basic website, census.www.census.gov. And um, over here under browse by topic, okay, you come over here and move to the right, you go to geography. And it brings up the geography page. And so we have a huge geography department down in Suitland, Maryland. They're always uh, doing line work and all sorts of things. Um, I did put this in the chat at the very beginning. So if you want to reference this uh, website, you could, or this part of our website. Uh, so these are the three types of um, geographic uh, uh, shape, I'll call them shape files that we have. So we have the regular type of shape files. We have cartographic boundary files, which are what I like because they're, that you can clip them to, um, your your map i'll just open that really quick you can put it on your map because you know believe it or not we never in arcgis never used to have base maps okay and you had to make your own base maps but now you have base maps and you're making things and you, this is just an easier way to go you can download these shape files if you want to and then it used to be and i think it still is um that the um fips code is set a little bit nicer in the cartographic boundary files. And when you pull in data from data.census.gov, I'm pretty sure it still um, kind of marries up a little bit easier um, than, other, than other things. But let me just show you, this is sort of what's here. If you wanted to go through and down, download uh, whatever you need. Okay, so that, that is here. Let me go back one. We have the tiger line files. So if you want those, these are, are the more traditional, um, you know, geographic information that we have. 
And notice that you can go back through different years. So not everything is, um, uh, probably I would go back to 2019 right now, by the way, 2020, they're starting to put the things there, but 2020 is, they're putting the, the tiger shape files for the end of the year. So that by the end of the year, we have all the data and you can get that information. But right now, um, I would go back to 2019, or if you wanna go earlier and you can kind of look around and see. So we have the option between web interface and then this F, FTP um, site as well, if you wanted to go there and do that. Um, all right, one, let me go back one more. Okay, and then we also have the Tiger uh, Line Geo databases. Some people like those. I, I have to say I'm not I'm not well versed in geo um, geo databases, but they are here. the The issue with this is um, you probably have to go back to 2019. Even though this says or something there, I would say 2019 because what really happens? The 2019 data came out in December but the geo databases aren't really put together until around May of, the, of the, the following year, meaning this year around May, the 2019 geo database information will probably all be put together and be there ready for you to download if you wanna go that route. So this is another way that you could get that. Um, so I'm gonna go up here to the top, I'm going to change this. All right, and I go to data.census.gov and I'm watching Katie, I'm watching the clock. Okay. Okay. Got maybe hey, five. you're doing you're doing good. We're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So here we have um, Explore Census Data. So notice this is its own website. This is not really part of data.census.gov. Um, it's its own data.census.gov. Many of the federal agencies are kind of doing this data dot whatever thing. But if you were to click on the the logo, the landing logo up here, it won't take you back to uh, census.gov. It will always bring you back to this portal. So um, don't don't think you're doing something wrong, okay? And we, we sort of tell people that this works better in Chrome, at least um, this month, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to go right here to advanced search and we can come down here. And so I like to tell people when they are looking for data, okay? That, that I really think you should put the year in first. I, you don't have to. You could go looking by geography or topic to see if it's there or survey, but I tend to put my year in first and I know that 2019 is the latest. I don't know why these other years are up here, but 2019 is the latest year, okay? And notice once I choose the 2019 down here at the bottom left, it throws us 2019 filter chip, we call it down there, all right? I could then come to geography if I wanted to. And um, so in this case, what I will do is I will just go, I'll say county, and I will come down here and I will say Massachusetts. And I say all counties in Massachusetts. And then once I've done that, it throws that chip down here into my filters, okay? So it's sort of ready for me to look around. I can then come here to topics if I wanted to and look for a topic, um, or I could come to survey. And when you come to survey, you're really coming to um, census, uh, ACS one year and whatever is not available because what for whatever the parameters are you've put there, if it's not available, it will blank it out. You can't get it, okay? But as I go down here, I see that it has the five-year data profile. Now I could take a one-year data profile, okay? And it probably will work for Massachusetts. But for example, if I did Vermont, there would be some counties, right? That would be less than 65,000 people and there would be no data for them. It wouldn't be in my, in my um, table. And I kind of say to myself, well, what happened? You know, why is this missing? So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to click the five-year estimate. So there it is. Down here, you can see my chips, five-year estimates, all counties in Massachusetts 2019. And then what I do is I go up here, go down here to the right. I have to move my, okay. And I click on search. 
And then it, it searches really quickly and it has found that there are only four tables for that year, okay? Um, if I had not chosen the year, it would go back through time and find these tables um, going back all the way to 2000 for me. So I will, uh, actually, I think I chose the wrong data. I, I, okay, I made a mistake, but it's good for you to see that I am human. So if I needed to change my filters, I just come here to filter. So I clicked on what's called comparative profile. I don't want that. I want the data profile. Okay, so I said five year. There it is right here. I chose the wrong one up here. And that's choosing from last year to this year. It shows the changes, but I just want the, the data profile. So once again, that's down there and I can come up here to the upper right and I say done. And then here it is. And let's just look at one table. Okay, so social characteristics. I click on that. Um, and then this is what a table looks like. All right. And when we, uh, let's see if I can do this. I'm trying to get this out of my way. Yeah. Okay. So you're really, you're window shopping. Okay. So you are looking at the table here. Notice it has Barnesville County. It has all the other counties. If I go to the right and here they are. And if I look over here on the left, it has all this information. Okay. And uh, population, marital status, fertility, grandparents. These questions are all in here because other federal agencies have a need to know. School enrollment, educational attainment, veteran status, disability. It's showing you what's their US citizenship. We do ask that question in the ACS, but we don't ask, are you here illegally or anything of that sort. Uh, year of entry that people came here, where they came from, sort of. Uh, language spoken at home, ancestry. Okay, that's a very popular one for people to look at. And a little bit of information about computers and internet usage, but anything, anything here that's in capital letters means that you could actually grab that and you could go looking for that word and it would find you all sorts of intricate tables. So uh, what you do now, you say, okay, this is the table I want, but if, if it wasn't, you could select a different table on the left, but I'm coming up to the upper right and I click on customize table and it opens the table for me, okay? And when it opens that table for me, I can do a few things. I can sort of, um, let me move my controls around. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So you can sort of scroll back and forth like that if you wanted to. Um, and sorry, Kate, I'm just trying to get rid of my, um, you guys can't see my Zoom controls in the way. No, you're, nope, we just see your screen. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, it, it looks sort of, good. It floats around. That's the problem. Let me see if I can move it up there. Yeah, okay. So this is the table. You can download it straight away if you want to do that. If you click on that, you're going to get that um, in a CSV file. Uh, you can uh, download it straight to Excel. Now, I want to tell you that you can clean up this table before you download it to Excel. So for example, if you don't want those margins of error, we always give it to you. You just turn them off right here. And then if you download to Excel, it will um, give you an Excel table with no margins of error in it, okay? But if you go the download button, it gives you the full Monty. It gives you what you be began with and it, it's not going to let you off, okay? You can come over here to the right there's a little button that says columns and you can come here and you can say, okay, certain things I don't want. Maybe I, maybe I don't want, um, I don't know, Barnesville County for some reason, you can, you can say, get rid of it, you know, turn it off or, or minimize it. And, and then when you go back to columns, you're going to start having less information and you can download it. Actually, it didn't do anything, but um, I think, yeah, I did. I can turn things off. There it is. Okay. All right, and it, it got rid of it for me. And so then I can download it. So you can do some of the work here at the beginning, okay? So this is this is sort of how this works. Um, I will tell you, just so we have an idea, um, let me see what time are we at? Uh, okay, really quickly, you can hit this map right here and it takes the first variable um, that's there and it tries to map it for you. It will make a core plus map 
So the, ver the variables that are in the table are right here. And if you wanted to map a different variable, you can do that. And by the way, if you wanted to add, okay, I took away this county over here, but let's say for some reason, I needed Providence County, Rhode Island added. You can come here, you can select, come back, click on that and say select, and it adds it to your table and it, it maps it for you, whatever the variable is you're mapping. Okay, so that's a very quick, in a nutshell, um, how we get the data. Um, we I did it for multiple counties. You can do it for one county if you want to. You can do it for one tract if you want to. You can do it for a city, a school district, whatever you need to do it for, you can do it for that or multiple. You can do it across county or state lines. Um, there are different ways to do, do different things. The only thing I would tell you is we used to have a great, uh, this used to be supported by Esri and um, it had great, great base map. And now we're sort of stuck with this um, base map that can put you to sleep almost, but you can't, you can't really see other attributes too much in here. So that, that just keep that in mind, but we are, we're all in the GIS world and G, sort of geographers here. And so we know how to read the map, but many people uh, struggle with this. So that is something that I would say, keep in mind. Um, if you need to get out of here, I do a couple of different things. I might go back to my table right here and I back up and then I back up to the filter right here on the left. And then I say, okay, maybe I don't want all the counties in Massachusetts. Maybe I don't want Providence and maybe I don't want five year data profiles, you know, and then I start setting up again what I wanted. And just so we know, okay, right now, all I have in here as a, as a filter is 2019, wherever you see a little, um, I call it a loop, but wherever you see this um, magnifying glass, often you can put in a word. So I did see that somebody was looking for somewhere housing de density. We don't have that, but we have housing unit. And you should be able to put that in and it might not, might be housing unit, not housing. Uh, well, there it is, okay. And you can put that in and it finds all these tables that deal with housing units or really just the number of housing units in, a, in whatever you want, in a block, in a city or whatever. So that is another way to go about that. So um, I am going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, and... I think, Katie, you were going to go into breakout rooms. Is that right? Yeah, thank you, David. Thank you. Um, so, and we did have one question that came into the chat, but mm -hmm. maybe we can focus on the questions um, a little bit later on, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I wanna get us into these breakout rooms. So what we're gonna do for this is David just showed us all of <laughs> like just the basic way that you can go in and access the data. When it, yeah, it was a lot. He showed us different types of data that we can access. So now what we want to do is think about um, what sort of questions do you have in your own organization? So hopefully you can see um, you can see my screen here. And what we have is this little uh, spreadsheet and I will pop this into the chat. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into these breakout rooms and each one of your groups will um, will actually come into this spreadsheet and and add your own uh, question or multiple questions if you want. So I'll pop this link into the chat and what we can do is. Uh, uh, yeah, Katie, I don't think we see the spreadsheet. We're seeing explore census. Explore oops, census. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah better. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> okay. And I just put the link in the um, in the chat. So uh, for folks that just haven't used Google Docs before, you'll see as people start to filter in, you can actually see who's there. And like this anonymous hamster has clicked a, clicked a little section down at the bottom here. So when you go into your group, try to just um, maybe pick one individual from your group that can be the 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 note taker, so to speak. And when you are that note taker, you can come in and you can click in the grid somewhere. Uh, so you don't have to go like right in order. It's okay if we have some gaps here, it's more important that we're not typing on top of each other. So uh, grab a little spot in the grid and the, we're going to focus on these first few columns. So the first column is what question do you want to answer with the data? 
And then as David showed us, there's a lot of different ways to kind of drill down, right? So, so you have this question, but, um, but we want to think about what location is this for? So is it for the entire state of Massachusetts? Are you interested in just one county in Rhode Island? You know, try to, try to drill down a little in terms of location. Then you can also choose a specific year. So it sounds like from David's explanation that 2019 is, is, seems to be the recommended year for the most recent data. But if you are looking for anything historical, then you can put the year into column C. And then the characteristics. And this is, uh, this. can you see, see the other screen I've got here? Hold on, Let's share this. So this is the screenshot from David's presentation of those characteristics that he talked about. So you've got the economic characteristics um, and you have uh, like all these different, all these different subsections are listed in orange. So if you do have any specific characteristics that you're trying to, to explore or items that you feel like might help answer your question, then I encourage you to put that into column D. And then finally, if you have any specific ranges, like if you're interested in just a specific age range, um, so like individuals over 60 or, or something along those lines. So we're really focusing on these first um, few columns that are highlighted in green. All right. So we're going to go into these breakout rooms for, let's see, how are we doing on time? We'll go into the breakout rooms for, I mean like, oh, sorry, let me get my. Now I've lost all my notes. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do the breakout rooms for uh, for eight minutes. We're, yeah, we'll do breakout rooms for eight minutes, if that's okay, Adam. Um, and so Adam is going to randomly assign you to a room. And as I said, kick that off by, by nominating somebody to be your note taker. So they're the ones that will actually populate that spreadsheet. And the goal is to just think of one question right now. But if your group has more than one question, that's okay too. Um, and then we'll come back together and David, we'll put David on the spot and we'll test him. <laughs> and he's going to look at that list of questions and see if he can find uh, some resources to answer them. All right. All right. Great. And so David, do you are you able to see the spreadsheet? Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Awesome. Yeah, so what we're going to do now, I mean, it's a little it's a little messy um just with gaps and stuff like that, but that's perfectly fine. Um but we can see that there's quite a few different questions that got added in there and it looks like some folks are still populating some of those additional columns for um location and year and characteristics. So um, so David, how you, how you feeling? Do you want me to, uh, I'm okay. So you, far. Want, me to st I'm, you I'm want me to stall it. for a while? <laughs> no, 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 you don't have to stall. Let me, let me just, I'll share my screen. Right. And I, I yeah. feel like I'm on a game show, right? Yeah, kind of. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me, um, go back. Yeah. So while David is getting his screen set up, what we're going to do now is um, if folks would like to follow along, then um, then what we're going to try to do is see if we can find the data that will help support some of these questions. Yeah. And Let those links. Share screen. OK, you're let's see. there it is. OK, share. OK. So why don't you give me, can you read me one of the questions? Just let me, and I'll think if I can answer it. Sure. So, um, well, that's, is it cheating if we use Adam's questions? Um, Adam was asking about uh, what are the languages that are spoken within my 
within my municipality. Um, okay, and so what is that municipality or what is a municipality that has a lot of languages? So I know that one's based in the state of Massachusetts in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. Maybe Cambridge? Uh, Worcester, uh, Worcester might be interesting. Worcester, Worcester. or okay. uh, Fall River. But yeah, uh, the Boston area was, was what I was talking about. Boston area. Uh, what about Somerville? What is, is that diverse? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We can do a couple. We can put a few, you know, so let's go here. First of all, we, I could select the year. Let me do that. 2019. And so uh, we talked about this in our own breakout room. And so I, I'm going to, I guess, give you a little, um, show you a little historical stuff here. So 2019 is what I selected, right? And we're looking for what we call place, all right? So here it is down here. I believe it's place. And we're within the, actually, let's, let's not do place. Let's do county subdivision because then I'll, I'll probably get everything in Massachusetts. So. so if you see it yell, I'm looking for, there it is, county subdivision. Okay, and that will have a mixture of cities and towns is how that works. And so we're looking for mass, there it is. Okay, and let, so let's, oh, I need to know the county. Do we know what county, what's the county north of Boston? Uh, Middlesex. Middlesex, okay, so we'll do that. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, and so I, I said Somerville, but let's just take two towns and, and we'll compare them if we can, uh-oh. This thing is giving me a hard time. Okay, by the way, if you have a long list, you can come up here to this little loop and you can put in the name and it will find it for you, okay? And don't take the urban rural thing, just take the whole thing, right? And it threw it down here, but let's, let's put another um, town in there. So I think maybe, uh, oh, I know Cambridge, right? Is there, so I will add, Cambridge as well. Okay, so we just have two places there. Okay, we have the year and we can come here to topics if we wanted to. So over here on the left, I'm on the very left now and I come back here and we can sort of go hunting for populations and people or race and ethnicity if we want to go that. And sometimes people will use ancestry um, as a way to find language, right? Um, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and I will come up here right here to the loop and I put in the word language and let's see what happens. And here it is language spoken at home and so I click on that and then I say search. And so here's a table over here s1601 and let's see what that looks like because sometimes I by the way, I always say we're window shopping here, right? So this is letting me know here's an option, but I still have all these other options over here on the left if I wanted to look at those, right? So let's look at this. So we have Cambridge here. We have the uh, total population five years and over, right? And then as we go through, it's letting us know which people speak uh, Spanish, uh, and they're sort of broken out in ages, right? Other Indo-European languages, Asian, Pacific, uh, other languages, and, and that's it. So I don't think that's like a, a great table, right? So you're looking for that. Um, but over here we come over limited English speaking households. And it has a little bit of information there. There's another one, people speaking a little bit of information here if you go through that. So it isn't, I don't think it's a really, it's so great, you know, um, but let me keep going down here. B16, I'm looking for, okay. But then here's one detailed household language by household limited English. Let's look at that one. Okay, and so that's a detailed household. And notice it's a little, the number B16002, that's a, a table that's dealing, it's a longer number and it's dealing with a language. So first, first lesson here is don't give up after you look at the first one, keep going, right? So now we have Spanish limited, uh, French limited, German limited. So it's like, how well do people speak the language, right? Oh. 
Now, by the way, I tell people if they find a table ID that they like, write it down. If you know you're going to use that again and again. So here we have B16002. We're going through and it has these different languages here and how well people speak it or not. And it's really, um, yeah, touching, touching on things. If we want to notice one year data, let's see if we can change it. Uh, there is no, I guess there is no five year data. There should be though, filter. Oh, okay. So let me, I'll just go back to the table. So I should be able to get five year data. Okay, so Rebecca and I had a little a little talk about this, right? And um, in 2015, the government came along and they they we had great language tables, okay? And they really got into the nitty gritty of things, and they decided um, that populations needed to be protected, and so they started. Um, pushing up the data, meaning you have to get larger areas to get granular in the data. And so you can only get it by city, you can't get it by tract, and there's less information here. But, so let, let me just show you something. That table used to be called B16001. If I go to filter over here on the left, it's just something to know if I get rid of 2019, okay, and then I have this, and maybe I come up here and let's see if we look for, if I go to 2015, I mean, sorry, uh, year right here. If I can go back to 2015, okay. And I say done, I have probably better tables. Okay, that have a little bit of information over here. I'm looking for my B16001. Here it is right here, but it doesn't exist after 2015. And let's just see what that table looks like. So it's just so you know, it might be this. Well, no, you have a little bit more now. You have Portuguese in here, Italian, Yiddish, West German, Germanic languages. And so by the way, sometimes it was, we even used to have Pennsylvania German which is, it would help people locate where there are Amish populations. So this table in 2015, B16001, look at all the information that's here. Okay, so you can get the information, um, but it isn't too granular. I mean, unless you go back to 2015, um, but you can still get some information. So yeah, I'm sorry about that, but that is, that is a toughie. That is, that is a tough uh, situation. Is, yeah, and this is a great example of just all the different language information that is available. Um, yeah. I do I, refer people back to 2015 sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. David, yeah. looking at the sheet, it looks like we have a number of different people who are asking about, um, about home prices. So um, one individual says, what is the cost of housing, both rental and owner? properties let's see if we can do that i'll just select um okay let me let's see if we can go 2019 right and you can we'll just take a uh, okay somebody said uh, county maybe we'll just take geography i'll just take um, if i can slide this over sometimes this doesn't work uh okay we'll just go back to cambridge i'll choose that no, not that one okay search you can just hit search oops okay filter click on your filter go back to there if that's what happens to you right okay and what was it we were looking for uh, mortgages or um no price. Uh, the cost yeah cost of housing mm -hmm. okay topics and we're going to go come here to housing and see what we have here that might look um owner renter characteristics Let's, let's look at that. Owner renter tenure, owner renter characteristics year moved in. I don't know that we're going to have like uh, Zillow prices, but um, let's but there see is a, there is price for um, at least for like mortgage and, and yeah, rent yes, prices, yes. right? That's in there. Yes, it is here. I think I didn't give it a geography. I didn't choose. 
Oh, no, we do care Cambridge. Okay. So we should be able to see search. Okay. And so these are the different things demographic characteristics for occupied housing units, financial characteristics, hmm, physical would, housing. Would it be financial characteristics? Let's look at that. That might be how much people earn or how much they're spending, household income, and the, okay, occupied housing. Uh, monthly housing costs is there. Oh, and you, by the way, sometimes you have to scroll to the right of the table and it gives you extra information like percentage occupied, owner occupied housing units, right? And then we're probably going to come over here and find renter occupied housing units. So that's how much people are spending. Um, monthly housing costs. Yeah. So I don't, I think maybe we need to go back to filter, right? Unless I, let's scroll down. Let's just window shop a little bit more. Okay, go back to filter. I'm going to get rid of the um, this and I will put in the word, I know mortgage, do you wanna look at that? I could put in, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I did see a couple people mentioned mortgage. Mortgage, okay. So mortgage costs. So also, let me, I wanna say that all the information that we're gathering are from the people who live there. It doesn't necessarily mean they come out with the records. It just kind of give us, you know, a general idea of what's going on. So financial characteristics, housing units with a mortgage. Oh, housing units without a mortgage. Hmm. Okay, so owner occupied housing units with a mortgage, right? And if you're going, I'll uh, scroll over just a little. You know what? You can manipulate the table right here on the screen. I, you know, I told you you could download, by the way. If you're in the customized table mode, I pushed the button up here on the right. You can actually, if you had an Excel spreadsheet open somewhere, you can just copy this and paste it. You know, copy, you know, highlight what you want like this. You right click copy and then you just paste it into your Excel. So let's see what's going on here. So we have Cambridge, median dollars. I think that would be, oh my gosh, that's the, that, yes. that's high. Basically high. saying that there's nothing below yeah. that. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> this is Cambridge. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I mean, I, I thought I lived in a really kind of, oh well, never mind. Every, the last year, everything's going sky skyrocketing, right? Um, and with the well, second. David, now could we add another town to this so that we could do a quick yes. comparison? Like, yes. let's say between, between Cambridge and. Um, Yep. I don't want this all to be about but maybe Cambridge and Arlington, another neighbor. Yeah. And and by the way, um, this is the thing I like about the map. If you select by the map, it doesn't really care. Um, you know, here's Cam Cambridge right here, but we don't we don't have to worry about um Oh, so you, you know, could go what, all the way yeah, out to like yeah, Worcester or something. Yeah, you could. So somebody mentioned Fall River. I know that's not what we were doing before, but I'm I'm going to go to Fall River. And it's over here somewhere, isn't it? Um, I'm losing. It. Oh, here it is, right here. Okay, select, and we say select. Okay, and anything else you want me to select? Oh, and you said anyone Wilson. else have another town? Yeah. Yeah, favorite town. Okay, I'll I'll take um, Lynn. I don't know. I just know somebody who lives there. I don't know much about that city. We'll add that there. Okay, so now we have those three, right? And I can go back to the table. Okay, and sometimes it takes a little, I'll say conniving to get it to work, <laughs> but it should, it's, uh, okay, come on, come on, where's my table? And this is where you mentioned that Chrome is recommended? Uh, Chrome is recommended, yeah. Okay, and I come back here to filter, everything is there. There it is. So I, I went back to the filter, right? And I just say search or done. 
Uh, oh, I know. Table. Come on. All right. Let's try that again. Search. Uh, it's 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 kind of freezing up on me. Okay. Yeah, let me do that. Table. Yeah, there it is. So I went up here to the table on the left. So now we have Fall River. What were we looking at? We were looking at the median. Oh, here the it median, is. The right? median, yeah. Okay, so Fall River is 207. Let me move this over. I'll get rid of them. Um, I'll leave it like that. Well, we did have a question about the margin of error and how important that is. For yeah, that's be, even when you would be using it. Yeah, so what I kind of tell people, and I'm not a statistician, okay, but we generally say that this margin of error, for example, right here, okay, less than $50,000, um, it means to the, to the right plus or minus over the number over here. So for example, we have, okay, here, this one, 4,949, it could be within that range plus 1,185 on either side of the number. Okay, but I, I'm pretty sure that this number is pretty good. But what we do say to people is if you get up here, like here we have 188, if your margin of error is higher than this estimate, maybe you don't wanna use it. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't really sound, I don't know, so good maybe. So that's something that the way we go. And also, if you're looking at a, a, like a tract level data or something like that, and your margin of error, er, margins of error all seem to be sort of more or less the same, you know, not two, but you have one that's like a real outlier that just seems to be so incredulous. You, that's the one you may be skeptical about. So what, what I all often tell people too, is if you are using this data, um, you may want to at least reference it and say it's from ACS five-year data, okay? And this is actually ACS one-year data. Let's see, and we'll get a different number if we choose the five-year data and it, the margin of error may be lower. So here we have the same thing, right? And yeah, so less than 50,000. So it's a larger sample. Um, and so the margin of error kind of goes down. Um, I'm a big fan of the five-year data. I, I kind of urge people, unless you're like doing the state or a large populated city or county, maybe you want to stick with the, the five-year data. But okay, so here we have the median um, uh, mortgage status we were looking at, right? Yeah, and David, if you don't mind, we did have a question about the, the ACS five-year profile in compare um, versus the comparison profile. So oh. that's... Yeah, I can go back and show that if we want to want to do that. Uh, yeah, and I apologize. That question came in a little bit earlier. I guess one of the more recent questions that came in is what what definitions does the census use to differentiate between urban and rural? That's a hard question. And, and that is done <laughs> by block. That is done by census block every 10 years and they cobble it together. And I think they're actually maybe changing it around right now. But a certain number of uh, people or housing units live in a block. And also it has to be more like a, around a um, metropolitan statistical area. And they start from the center and they sort of work their way out. And so these, these urban blocks and rural things are going through towns and everything. So before it had town and it had urban or rural. And it's probably the urban part and the rural part. So what fell into what? Um, I actually steer clear of that <laughs> unless somebody really needs to figure that out. But yeah, you, you could do that. Let me go back and we'll look at a comparison table and I'm going to clear the whole thing. So I'll click on this, come back to advanced search and we'll just um, geography. This thing is freezing up on me a little bit, but we will just take a county in Massachusetts. And I went to school at Clark University, so I will take Worcester County. And here it is, Worcester. Okay, so here we have Worcester County. I will choose that, okay. And so that's down here. I, I won't bother with a year right now, but we were looking at surveys and comparison table, right? So ACS 
one year. And we have the data profile, which you've seen, and I'm looking. Yeah, the question was specifically about the ACS five-year profile versus the comparison profile. Oh, okay, five-year, five year. let's see if that's here. Yeah, five-year comparison profile. Let's look at that to see what that looks like, okay? So here it is. I'll select one of these, housing characteristics, all right? So when we had the, um, the regular profile, it's giving us the data for the last five years. But when we look at a comparison profile, it's comparing this set of five years to the previous set of five years and letting us know over here on the right, if there's an asterisk, that there's a significant statistical change, whatever. And so it's sort of just comparing it for us so that you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I don't know that that's, I guess for some people it's useful. Um, so you're saying if there's, can you explain that again? What does the star mean versus if it's just- Well, an that's, and I don't know what the breakout is. Yeah, the, that means the Census Bureau says there's statistical significance. There's like a, a, a larger increase than would normally they think would happen. So there's something. So from 5.6 to 5.3, I guess they, they they say that's acceptable. We say that's acceptable. But at certain points, they say, oh, maybe you want to look at this to see what's going on, going on, why it changed. But I don't know what that breakout is. That means it's significant. So I'm sorry about that. Um, right. Let me just I go think... through this so you see the table. Right. It's all about housing units and what's in them, housing tenure your householder moved in, vehicles they have, um, occupy, what kind of heating fuel they use, um, how many people, um, or how, how much is occupied, lacking um, plumbing, okay? And the lacking plumbing thing is, I think somebody was talking about um, underserved, and we used to think that was a rural thing, and it's an urban thing where landlords turn off hot water or they, you know, they don't give uh, plumbing all the time. And so the question is how something like how reliable, do you have re reliable plumbing facilities or something of that sort? And so this is an urban issue, the plumbing facilities. Um, David, just looking at the time, um, do you think that you can just show us quickly, you mentioned that um, we can download the data as a spreadsheet or a CSV, but for us GIS folk, can you just show us really quickly how we would download this data as a shapefile or something that we could potentially then work with in, um, in ArcGIS Online or? Yeah, so up here on the upper right, I hit customize table and you're going to come here and you can download it if you want CSV download or Excel, right? And um, I don't know that I'm going to be able, let me just do Excel, um, export if it will even open. Ah, all right, oh, here it comes, okay. So let me see if I can just open this. Can you see my? Um... I can see your Windows Explorer, yep. All right, let's see, this, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so my understanding is that when you get this, so this is the description, but the data is going to be here. We're still seeing your census website. Oh, okay, census website. Uh, okay, and so this is the Excel. And so I was thinking that you would get a geocode here that you could use, but I don't see it. So it seems to me you will have to probably then download it as CSV. Yeah, that's a good, I'm glad you asked this question actually. So, okay, let me go back. Ooh, okay, hold on, it, it cut out on me, right? Okay, sure. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Uh, oh, you know, you know what? Why this is like this? It's only one um, geography. 
let's just see. I'm just going to add really quickly. You know, what's going to happen is when you when you um, download it, you should get your um, FIPS code in there, and you should be able to. Um, yeah, table. Okay, tables. Customize. Okay. So if I download and I, by the way, you can take the former years if you want to download. I'm not too good. I don't know if I can actually open the CSV. Maybe. Yeah. Opening. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if it looks like anything. Yeah. So if you can, can you see on the left? Can you see my Excel? No, we're seeing the census website. So. Okay. Now, do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So I downloaded the CSV and then I export it, you know, brought it into Excel. And what you're going to get over here, by the way, and this is a county, right? Um, so this will be your GeoID. And when you download your shape files, you're going to have these ID numbers in there as well, right? So you are going to have to match that up and probably you're going to have to take out the 0555 or whatever, it might say 01 or whatever, all the way to US, remove that. And the 25 means is the state of Massachusetts. And I guess 027 is Worcester County and I chose another county. And the 017 is a is a Middlesex County. So then you will you will match those numbers up, right, with your um, geographic files, and that's how you're going to get your data. And then this will be the data over here. We used to have another system that was a lot easier, but. Um, and where do you get that own... ge Where do you get that oh. geographic file from? Okay. So you're always, when you're downloading the data itself, it's always going to be in a CSV or an Excel file. And then you need to join that data table to, to right. the actual spatial yeah. layer. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Share. Okay, back to Census Bureau website, right? And come over here to browse by topic. Go to geography. You can see this, right? Yep. Okay. Geography. And then you're going to come down here and whichever one you want, tiger line or cartographic boundary. And I prefer cartographic boundary. So I'm going to just click on that. And I'll come down here, 2019. And then I, I probably would take the smallest, uh, 500,000. Um, you can. You can do the shape file if you want to do that, but cartographic boundary files, I come down here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking for county. Here it is, shape file. And it's going to download the whole nation for you. My, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. You, you guys got to, you got to yell at me. If I can do this, let me just get this out of the way. I've, hold on. Okay, if I go down here, it looks like I can get it. Uh, I thought it was down here, county. Does anybody see it? Subdivisions, New England places. Oh, darn it. Well, that's okay. Yeah. I am just, I'm looking at the time here, and unfortunately, we do okay. need to wrap up. But, you can, but it looks yeah. like this is the place to come to to find all these different shape files. Yeah. And you can decide yeah. which shape file you want to download, and then you can join that to the yeah. spreadsheet that you downloaded. Yeah, it's the national one. The, these shape files, the, these uh, cartographic boundary files, use up less data, though. They take up less space, and, okay. and they're clipped to the shoreline. So it's a kind of a nicer way to go, I think. So. Um, Great. Okay. Any? Um, I don't know. Any other questions? Yeah, I think. Um, 
So I didn't see any others that came into the chat, but what we're going to do, so just to, to wrap up here, I just want to let folks know that the, the spreadsheet that we worked on tonight, that is going to continue to be available. And there is a column in there uh, that, that says um, method for investigating this question. So I do encourage you to, um, to now that you know how to search for and find the data, then go back into that spreadsheet sheet and populate that column that explains the method for finding the answer to your question. And, um, and I encourage folks to this, this document is going to be a, a living document for all of our New York community events. So some of you may have noticed that there is also another tab in that spreadsheet that uh, refers back to the event that we had last month. And then the idea is kind of moving forward. Um, when we have other events, we can just add more tabs to the this document so that we can continue working on these different topics with one another. So uh, I do want to mention that we have another event coming up next month. It is going to be focusing on um, specifically on um, redlining data and talking about mapping inequality. And that is going to be held on Tuesday, April 29th from noon to 1.15. And you can find more information about that on our um, upcoming events section of our website, which I will put into the chat right now. Um, and then most of you, I noticed, thank you for filling out the pre-registration questions. I know that most of you did find this about find out about this event through our New York listserv. So we will continue to post events to the listserv. Uh, and please contact me if you have events that you're interested in seeing or events that you might be interested in hosting. We would love to keep doing these community workshops. Uh, and then uh, also just one final plug, our spring conference is coming up on May 18th. So we do hope to see you all there as well. So uh, thank you again so much to David for all of the, everything you shared with us tonight. This is just an amazing amount of information, both from you and in, in the, the website. So thank you for helping us uh, and look forward to seeing folks continuing to work with this information. And good luck. Uh, everybody has my email. Thank you, David. All Thanks, right, everyone. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Katie. Yes, thank you, Adam, being our tech support. <laughs>